The Worst Pandemics in History Age of Men is over. Believe it or not, this statement was about to make a reality. Pay close attention to the video and find out how many times humanity nearly lost the war against an invisible enemy. Before starting, keep in mind that a disease becomes a pandemic when it affects more than one continent, whereas an epidemic occurs when it affects a specific geographic area. Alright then, the first pandemic is… Antonine Plague The Great Roman Empire had control of almost the whole world, but nothing devastated it more than the Antonine Plague. Although the health status of Rome was the best in the world at that time, and also had Greek scientific medicine, nothing prepared it to contain the virus. This pandemic started in the east and spread across Rome when the co-emperor Lucio Vero returned from a military campaign. The Antonine Plague took out the lives of 2,000 Romans per day. The symptoms of this terrible disease were fever, diarrhea, swollen throat, and rash. They always got the impression that it was most likely smallpox or measles, but nothing has been confirmed. The consequences were serious for the empire, as it lost military and manpower. It's estimated that about 5 million people passed away due to this plague between 165 and 180 CE, which represented 10% of the entire empire. Plague of Justinian Nothing struck the Byzantine Empire that hard like the Justinian's plague between 541 and 543 CE. This pandemic started in Africa and moved on to Egypt. It arrived in Constantinople from the port of Alexandria, transmitted by the Black Rat. The plague was named after the Roman Emperor Justinian I, who ruled the Byzantine Empire by then. The early symptoms were high fever and swellings in the mouth and throat. But after nine days, rashes, which could lead to pustules, appeared. In 2013, scientists confirmed that the bacillus named Yersinia pestis caused the plague, the same bacillus that caused the Black Death centuries later. Although it's been so long and knowing the exact number is difficult, it's estimated that about 25 million people perished from this disease, definitely a greater number than any of the fatalities caused by war at that time. The Black Death if the human being was ever close to becoming extinct, for sure, it was when the Black Death reigned on Earth. The plague is thought to have originated in Asia by trading ships. When Mongolians attacked Kaffa, a Genoese colony in Crimea, they infected their citizens. For that reason, in late 1347, Genoese people fled to Italy, ignoring that in their ships the black rats and fleas, inflicted with the bacillus named Yersinia pestis, would spread the plague to the rest of Europe. The symptoms are high fever, coughing up blood, and swollen lymph nodes. The Black Death devastated the most fragile communities in Europe, but monarchies weren't saved either, since both King Alfonso XI of Castile and Queen Margaret I of Denmark succumbed to the disease. For eight years, Europe was stricken with this invisible enemy that wiped out between 30 and 60 percent of its population, plus the millions of losses in Africa and Asia. This plague took the lives of 75 million people in total. Now, I'm sure that when I mentioned this disease, doctors in their horror dress walking in the fog came to your mind. But actually, they showed up to treat the plague outbreaks in the 17th century when the lethality was lesser. Humanity dodged a bullet at that time, and today, the disease has been eradicated. Smallpox The world wasn't prepared for the first outbreak of smallpox. People had only their faith to recover from any malady and the smallpox was a divine punishment. This disease was caused by the variola virus, which infects only humans. Its symptoms were high fever, diarrhea, and nosebleed. At its highest, smallpox affected 60% of the world's population and the mortality rate reached 30%. However, not only Europe was affected by smallpox. Europeans arriving in America was a demographic catastrophe for natives since their immune system couldn't fight against smallpox, so the population plummeted by 90%. Until the 20th century, smallpox took the lives of 300 million people. Finally, in 1796, Dr. Edward Jenner developed the first vaccine by observing that those who suffered from mild smallpox didn't have it again. After a worldwide campaign and the last case was reported in 1977, smallpox was declared officially eradicated. Cholera 
Cholera is a terrible disease caused by the bacteria Vibrio cholerae, serotype 01 and 0139, which makes you experience diarrhea, leading to dehydration. If that seems creepy, imagine millions of people losing their lives that way. Such a macabre scenario was a reality around the 19th century, when outbreaks of cholera occurred three times. The first one in India in 1817, which quickly spread throughout the Asian continent, including southern Russia. The second one started in 1829 in Persia, and then spread to the rest of the Middle East, and together with the Polish soldiers go to the west, expanding into the rest of Europe until it finally got to North America. The third cholera outbreak occurred in 1839 and lasted until 1856, spreading through North Africa and getting to Brazil. Typhus Fever Although it's a treatable disease today, in the past, typhus fever was a one-way ticket to the cemetery. It's caused by several species of bacteria rickettsia, usually transmitted by arthropods such as fleas or ticks. Currently, there are few cases in Southeast Asia, Japan, and Northern Australia, but the disease was once widespread throughout Europe and Asia. People suffering from typhus fever have rushes, cough, muscle pain, and delirium. At first, it was called jail fever, as it usually affected English prisoners. Even Napoleon caught it during his retreat from Moscow when his army was stuck in the frigid Russian winter. It's estimated that in the French army, the number of losses due to typhus fever was higher than the number of losses due to the fight with Russians. But perhaps the major typhus fever incident was during the time known as the year without a summer, when an epidemic broke out during the Irish famine in 1816, and about 100,000 people perished. Along all its periods of time, this disease put about 3 million people in their graves. Spanish Flu Despite its name, it didn't originate in Spain. According to studies, the first cases occurred at the Fort Riley military base in the United States, but as Spain kept neutral during the First World War and didn't censor information on the disease, it was named after this country. In 1917, most of the American military camps became infected, but they went to fight in the First World War anyway. By 1918, the first cases in many European countries were reported, so the pandemic started. The symptoms were high fever, earache, and vomit. Hospitals collapsed, and cemeteries were full. However, 75% of the people's passing happened during the second wave in 1918. Surprisingly, most of them were young adults in their 20s and 40s. As protective measures were unknown at that time, between 50 and 100 million people were victims of the plague. In other words, up to 6% of the planet's population. This disaster was caused by an influenza A virus of the H1N1 subtype. By the summer of 1920, the virus had been totally gone. AIDS Regardless of the advances in medicine, people are still afraid of the word AIDS because there's no cure yet. The virus that causes AIDS. Forgive me. The disease is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, which destroys the immune system, and getting it in the 1970s would have been a speedy execution. At first, AIDS wasn't relevant because it was associated with the gay community, and the investment in its treatment was ignored during part of the 80s until cases of infected children were presented. So it went from being called the gay plague to being considered a worldwide epidemic. Its symptoms include sore throat, yeast infections, and quick weight loss. In the early 1990s, the World Health Organization estimated that there were about 8 or 10 million people living with HIV. Today, there are 35 million. Since its onset, the AIDS pandemic has killed 25 million people, and the exact origin of the virus remains a mystery. Swine Flu After the swine flu, pigs weren't the same for the world. From 2009 to 2010, the AH1N1 virus, also known as swine flu, spread rapidly. The symptoms were fever, chill, red eyes, and a severe sore throat. The virus only affected pigs, but new influenza was able to affect humans, and the first case occurred on April 15th in California. Ten days later, the World Health Organization declared it a disease of international concern. However, two days later the swine flu was declared a pandemic and many citizens started wearing masks. Where have I heard that before? It had to wait until August 2010 for the pandemic to be over. 
Despite the spread of the disease, mortality was low, only 150,000 to 575,000 victims. It's time to talk about the pandemic that makes people be on the lookout. COVID-19 No doubt, the coronavirus has been the pandemic with the widest media coverage. It's an infectious disease caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Scientists think that the coronavirus outbreak came from a Wuhan's animal market in China, where up to 112 wild animals are traded. World Health Organization's representatives have said that the main source of the coronavirus is most likely bats. To prevent it from spreading to the rest of the country, China's authorities shut down the city, so people were on lockdown. However, it was too late for the rest of the world. In January 2020, outbreaks of the infection occurred in both Europe and the United States, and in March, also in South America and Africa. If you become infected, you would have a sore throat, fever, and breathing difficulties. But remember, don't decide on self-medication and contact your authorities. As of April, more than 1 million cases of coronavirus were reported worldwide, resulting in more than 51,000 lives lost. The disease definitely caught the entire world off guard. In spite of everything, the human being was able to survive and move forward. These won't be the only pandemics. Society must be more united and prepared than ever. What pandemic did you find the most devastating? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more interesting videos.